And now the good news. I'm Barbara Schreiner Trudell, and I am so excited to share with you some great stories tonight. Well, here's a great one. I'm a vegan, so this really speaks to me. Tasty burgers and steaks made of mycelium are now healthy food alternative to plant-based meats. In an effort to renew alternatives to meat in the wake of collapsing shares and sales of veggie meat in their companies, one man is looking at mycelium, the fibrous root structure of a life form much more similar to beef than soy. Mushrooms. Mm, don't you love mushrooms? In fact, of the five classic taste profiles, Umami has really only two members, meat and mushrooms. So making the first from the second is only logical. Makes sense to me. That's why Meaty is using its nationwide distribution deal with Sprouts Grocery Store to market mycelium steaks, burgers, and more. The mycelium is a part of the mushroom we never see and is composed of thousands of tiny filaments. It's cultivated in big steel tanks of sugar, water, and heat at the 125,000 square foot mega ranch in Meaty founder Thomas Huggins' home state of Montana. Hmm, Montana, hmm, beef capital. Uh, my point of view, he says, is we need more diversity in our food system, not less. More resilience, more options that resonate with people that are really enjoyable. And what's really great about this is that it is much more sustainable than some of the other options. So that in and of itself is one of the most important things. So by contrast, not one inch of farmland needs to be used to cultivate mycelium, which is typically grown on sawdust or other waste wood products. Meaty, of course, they use sugar as theirs. So products like Impossible Burger and Beyond Burger are what the Harvard School of Medicine defines as ultra-processed foods meaning an edible product that is many times removed from its natural state. But veggie meats are actually composed mainly of ultra-processed seed oils. So this mushroom thing, this is a good thing. So I'm really excited to give it a try. Hopefully it'll be available in Canada. We shall see. Well, you know, it is international... Uh, Women's Month. I'm making it a whole month. And so we've got a couple stories about wonderful women. And this is an 80 year old woman celebrates doing a 5k every day since the pandemic. So that's a thousand in a row. A Cherokee woman determined not to let the pandemic get her down began running or walking a 5k every day for 100 days. Although lockdowns, Alpha, Delta, Omicron, and maybe <laughs> May kept on running until she completed her thousandth 5K last Friday, two months short of her 80th birthday. I don't know about you, but she looks pretty good. <laughs> I don't know how she managed to do a 5K walker run every day for the last thousand days, but she did, says her daughter. Her milestone was celebrated by gathering of friends and family, even some virtually. She's a hero. We love that. Women with that kind of stamina, I'll tell you, you can't keep us down. I love that. Well, here's another very, very sweet story. Um, <clears throat> a man purchases an apartment complex after agreeing to unusual conditions. So the owner of a property management company in New York was has become the unlikely guardian of a 93-year-old woman. Brock recently made a deal to buy his first apartment building in upstate New York. The deal, however, came with an unusual condition. He confesses to Fox News in an interview that he was actually outbid by someone else willing to pay $100,000 more for the property. However, the owner told him that he would take $50,000 off the list price if he agreed to a specific term. He had to take care of the 93-year-old resident named Alice Schumann. He took a $50,000 haircut to make sure this woman is being taken care of. Happily agreed to the term, purchased the, the property. Eventually, he learned that the former property owner, who was looking to retire, had been escorting Alice to the bank, to her doctor, and to the grocery store. He also only charged her $200 a month for rent, while the same units in the building were going for around $2,000. 
For over 60 years, Alice had been living there. <clears throat> and the previous owner never had the heart to raise her rent. How sweet is that? Do we have beautiful people in our world? Yes, we do. A few months later, Alice had to be taken to the hospital for a medical emergency, and the staff deemed that she couldn't go back home. Fearing she would not receive the best care, he got a lawyer and became her legal guardian. I was visiting her every single day. They actually had a joke on the floor that she had a young boyfriend. I'd bring her food. I'd bring her flowers. He kept her apartment empty for nearly a year while she was in the hospital, hoping that she'd be able to return home. Unfortunately, in January, Alice passed away from pneumonia. But he was right by her side, holding her hand. And that is a really beautiful, beautiful story. You know, we need more people like that in the world who are willing to really put themselves out for someone else. All right. All right, the women in the world who are doing remarkable things. International Women's Day, it is, you know, it's so important that we really celebrate what women do and the remarkable things. And of course, if you remember last week, I talked about the Black Mermaid Foundation. So she's one of these remarkable women doing remarkable work. <clears throat> There's a Rom Romanian folk singer, Silva Dan 80, who has released her debut album, Interbeing, to keep, to help regenerate the landscape that inspired her grandmother to write these, this traditional music. She lives in a remote village surrounded by forests, inhabited by lynx, wolves, and bears. But this Amazon of Europe is threatened by illegal logging. Album sales fund a project called Forest Without Frontiers that plants native trees that are protected by law. And that is, you know, I'll tell you, give a woman a passion and she will get things done. All right. Now, I cannot pronounce this woman's name. And but her story is really remarkable. While studying industrial design and technology, uh, technology at London's Brunel University. Uh, Silvega, sorry if I'm saying it wrong, created a way to reduce food waste by updating the expiry date system. Bump is a plant-based gel incorporated into a bottle cap or product label that changes to a bumpy texture when food spoils. She has developed labels for red meat and dairy, seafood, juice, and smoothies. The fact this came from a university project and we've got a waiting list of customers in the food industry makes her incredibly proud. Trials show that the bump cap enabled 97% of households to use orange juice for up to six days longer than they would have with current guidance. So how great is that? Less waste, more use. Love that. All right, Stephanie Brobry. Good ancestor movement. Hmm. Finding out that the UK's food banks outnumbered McDonald's outlets inspired high-flying lawyer Stephanie Brobery to stop advising the mega-rich how to get richer. Now she runs the country's first wealth management company for wealthy people with a social conscience. At the Good Ancestor Movement, her growing team runs a bespoke three-month-long event program that engages her millionaire clientele with topics including slavery and divestment. We've all been socialized to keep taking from the system and to keep winning, she said. So to have someone say, I don't want an ISA because I don't believe it was designed for someone like me, that's a big thing. The work she's doing is important, and it really is one of those great stories where she's disrupting the flow of things as they were and creating something new. I love that. All right, Beth Dunn, Women's Street Watch, Newcastle. More than 50 volunteers in pink, <laughs> pink high vibe whatever that is, patrol the streets of Newcastle on a mission to help vulnerable women get home safely at night. This is beautiful. Beth Dunn co-founded Women's Street Watch Newcastle following the murders of Sarah Everard and Sabina Nesson. A pink van provides a safe space for women, including university freshers, clubbers, and those who are homeless to wait, charge their phones, 
or book a free taxi home. Wow, that's that's really positive and that's really beautiful. You know, we're looking out for each other. And I, I love these stories because they're so, so uplifting. Okay, Jolie Brilly, pregnant, then screwed. Okay, <laughs> being sacked the day after she told her boss she was pregnant inspired her to highlight the discrimination of working moms and campaign for women's rights. She launched her charity, Pregnant Then Screwed, on International Women's Day in 2015 and provides help and support to thousands of women through a free advice hotline, useful resources, a mentor scheme, and workshops. She's published her book, The Motherhood Penalty, last year and believes women need support to access the justice they deserve as much as they need help to recover from the mental health impact of discrimination. Yeah, we're still seen as a minority. Go figure. <laughs> Majority of the population and seen as a minority. Boy. <coughs> Pardon me. All right. Toby Aseri. My bump pay. Many women feel isolated uh, from their careers during maternity leave. A new online community for working moms aims to empower thousands to smash the glass ceiling when they have a baby on the way and beyond. It's about how to bounce back from these situations where you've just come back from maternity leave and your confidence is really low. Asari hopes her new book, The Blend, will help women to find a mix of parenting and career that works for them throughout motherhood. Boy, I know that one firsthand. All right, Nan Golden, Prescription Addiction Intervention Now, a documentary film, All the Beauty in the Bloodshed, takes a close look at grassroots political action through the story of Nan Golden. In 2017, Golden became addicted to oxycodone, a drug prescribed for pain that contributes to the overdose crisis. Boy, does it ever. Um, Purdue Pharma, the company that manufactured and pro profits from oxycodone, is owned by the billionaire Sackler family and donated millions to art galleries. Through Diane's and demonstration, Golden's group, Prescription Addiction Intervention Now, pain, calls for art institutions to terminate their association with the Sacklers. Hmm, I think that's probably a very good idea. Very good idea. All right, moving on. Man, so many great women. Ruth Miller, unglamorous music. Ruth Miller was almost 60 when she revived her own inner guitar hero and sparked Leicester's new all-female punk scene. It's kind of a hobby for us, but we're actually producing great art rock, and that's not been done before by ordinary women from our age group. Seven new all-female bands have already formed as a result. We're proof that you don't have to be young or the typical student type to start a band. Bravo. Keep rocking, ladies. All right, Sharon Blackie, hags with attitude. Okay, psychologist and neuroscientist, uh, Dr. Sharon uh, Blackie's new book, Hagitude, is a call for women to embrace menopause, reframe aging, and connect with the transformative power that can stem from the second half of life, as she calls it. By portraying menopause as a disability or dysfunction, we are missing out on its positive and empowering possibilities. Blackie offers a year-long membership program for the Hagitude community with monthly workbooks, webinars, guest speakers, and story sharing. Bravo, I'll tell you. Being one of those uh, women, I am grateful to hear her story. All right. Fatima Hadari, Afghanistan's only female tour guide. With travel to Afghanistan forbidden, visits are still possible with Fatima the country's only female tour guide. Following her escape from the Taliban, Haldari hosts virtual reality tours from her home in Italy using 360 degree videos, personal photographs, and insight into history, architecture, art, and culture. In collaboration with adventure travel company Untamed Borders, she showcases national treasures such as the intricate mosaics of the Great Mosaic of Harad and takes people inside traditional tea houses, bazaars, or into the ornately built roadside inn. Her dream, peace, freedom, gender equality, humanity, and love are my hopes for people, she says. Oh, I love that. <clears throat> 
All right. So, Nemonte Nenquimo, again, my apologies, a rainforest defender and indigenous activist, co founded the NGO Cibo Alliance to fight back against oil exploration, logging, and road building, which threatened the Ecuadorian Amazon. She has used a combination of ancestral knowledge and high-tech GPS mapping tools to build a legal case against the government. In 2019, the courts ruled in favor of the hunter-gatherer uh, Warani people protecting 500,000 acres of rainforest. Don't expect us to keep doing it all alone, she urged. We need you to fight with us to protect the Amazon. Wow, that's beautiful. Nicole Pisani, Chefs in Schools. Food can either be medicine or it can be poison. And she quit her job as a top head chef to co-found Chefs in Schools, a charity that improves school dinners. Her team retrains kitchen staff to provide fresh, nutritious meals to thousands of school children while encouraging food education in classrooms. One school recently opened a bakery to serve the school community. It's about finding solutions with positivity and care. That is a great idea. idea. Aloise Luzati, a French record label, is highlighting the forgotten contributions that female musicians have made to classical music. The Jewel Box was founded by French cellist Aloise Luzati. How could I have spent so many years without ever hear, having heard a piece of music composed by a woman? Too few works by women are published and therefore even fewer recorded. After lengthy research in 2022, Luzzati released a three CD box set of work by late French composer and mother of seven, Charlotte Sohi, who died in 1955. Wow, that is beautiful. Like who knew? Like some of these stories are just... Who knew? Holly Whitelaw, Cornwall Gleaning Network. One woman has helped rescue more than 100 tons of surplus, discarded, and wonky vegetables from fields and farms. Her Cornwall Gleaning Network diverts good enough to eat food to soup kitchens, refugees, food banks, and community larders. Gleaning is rewarding, said Whitelaw, whose background is in regenerative agriculture. People are getting the fresh veg literally straight from the fields. Wow. Do we have remarkable women in this world? Yes. Well, we're going to be back in just a minute. You're watching the good news and we're going to take a little commercial break. Be right back. change when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change Well, here's an interesting story. A woman who reunites families with lost heirlooms for free, and she's returned over 500 items to thrilled relatives. Chelsea Brown likes to trawl flea markets and thrift shops for interesting items, but not for decoration or collection. As an amateur genealogist, she enjoys tracking down the owners or the descendants of the owners and reuniting them with their lost heirlooms. The Manhattan interior designer claims to have returned more than 500 objects to their owners, and she does it all for free. I love the thrill of the chase. I love to close out the mysteries, says Brown. It's insane the things I have found. All of the Holocaust items I've been able to return have been extra special. Wow. That is a great story and such a remarkable and wonderful thing to do for people. Okay, this is the sweetest, sweetest story. I just love this. A woman spontaneously offers a homeless man a job on her farm 
proving the power of kindness. I'll tell you, the women in our world, they're pretty remarkable. When a woman struck up a conversation with an Ontario homeless man, she didn't imagine it would change his life forever. After it became clear that Brian Bannister was a kind soul who had simply fallen on hard times, Danielle McDuff offered him a job at her farm. Bannister was living in a shed after a terribly challenging life that involved childhood trauma, overcoming addiction, and the death of his first wife, followed by the death of his second wife. He said he had given up, but McDuff's offer revivified the man and brought the farm of a pair of hands that are diligent at work and gentle with McDuff's children and her animals. It floored me. It just came from the heart with her. And I've got to thank her every day, Bannister told CTV News Toronto, with tears in his eyes, who added he used to do farm work about 40 years ago. Every day he gets a ride to the farm where he helps McDuff's family care for 200 animals, including goats, cows, and horseshoes horses. The friendship that grew over time between the two Ontarios, Ontarians led McDuff to set up a GoFundMe to help Brian get back on his feet, which raised nearly $10,000 Canadian, was able to help him get his first shave and a haircut in two years, as well as a new phone. McDuff has helped organize some provincial financial support for Bannister. He has no idea what this has done for me, McDuff says. If we could get everyone off the street, ideally, that would be my one wish. But it takes a lot of people to come together, and that is what was, has happened for Brian. I think that's why we've come so far in such a short time. Oh, she's beautiful, beautiful. This, this is oh, so sweet. A little goose story. So a cemetery posts a personal ad for lonely goose whose mate died and they find a match. Can you imagine? A cemetery manager played Valentine's Day matchmaker to a lonely widowed goose whose mate passed away. Blossom and Bub lived together for years in the pond at Riverside Cemetery in Marshalltown, Iowa. But after Bud died last August, it seemed Blossom would spend the best years of her life alone. General Manager Dory Tamman noticed that Blossom would spend hours staring at herself in the shiny reflections of model tombstones by the cemetery office. And she realized her goose needed company. Tamman posted an ad on Facebook for a lovely widowed goose that has youthful adventurous and lively, looking for a life partner for companionship and occasional shenanigans. The ad, mostly a joke, worked like a charm, and Tamman received a surprising email from Deb and Randy Hoyt, who had a widower goose named Frankie, who was in the same sort of heartbroken rut. See, love is for everybody. Love is for everybody, even for the goose and the gander. I love that story. Okay, so here's, here's kind of a sweet and funny one. A man builds a cozy tree house as an Airbnb and earns enough money to quit his job. How cool is that? There's no, no silly ideas, that's for sure. Keen to uh, quit his day job, a West Virginia has built a quaint, beautifully furnished tree house for a Airbnb. It will pair with his other rather unorthodox listing, a cabin made out of a converted school bus. A treehouse is without question one of the most fairy tale places to sleep, as an adult or certainly as a child. Will Sutherland always wanted to build one on his four acre property in between two beautiful trees he found growing near the ledge of a large boulder uh, subsumed by the landscape. It took him six months, but with the promise of a hospitality fueled mini retirement, he managed it all by himself. I carried up every piece of wood. Every piece of floor, the roof trusses, the floor trusses, and the big quad beam. I also sourced a bunch of cedar logs from a friend who was having a house built. I have a sawmill at my house so I could cut, I could mill all the cedar for the siding. When at first he pitched the idea of a treehouse Airbnb, his wife Sabrina said that as long as we'll build a second bathroom, she was all for the idea. Look at that. How great is that place, eh? So with his previous Airbnb, the schoolie visitors had to enter the house to use their bathroom since there was none on the bus. 
Sabrina helped me with some details like the floor finishing and trimming some boards. She was by my side every day when she got home from working. What is be like this place is I talk about ingenious, right? People come up with the most remarkable ideas and I am in awe of humanity. I'll tell you, we can do great things. All right. One last story before we log off tonight. This is a miracle rescue of a missing skier. And I think Deja, my beautiful producer, has got a little video clip of this, which is really remarkable. The rescue, a missing skier buried by an avalanche with only one arm showing flags down a helicopter. Take a look. Barely see that arm. Wow, how they saw it, I have no idea. This is an incredible moment of a missing backcountry skier buried under snow was able to wave down a rescue chopper with only his one arm sticking out. The video shot by paramedic Matthew Lambert shows the man desperately waving with his only free limb as the helicopter ho hovered above while shining a light on the mountain. The young man, who has not been named, had been ski touring in the Ladardis region of Switzerland when an avalanche hit. His family alerted rescue services when he didn't return on time. Air Glaciers, a rescue and transport company, received the alert at 5.41 p.m. on February 8th and dispatched, dispatched a helicopter with a paramedic and two rescue guides. After checking the parking lot where the man had started his journey to ensure that he had not returned to his car, the team began flying over the route he had provided his family. The team eventually located visible ski tracks and one of the guys, guides was dropped off to trace them. Miraculously, only using the searchlight on the helicopter, the team was able to spot the man's arm waving at them. Wow, who would have thunk that? You know, we live in really remarkable times. And although, you know, we've come through a lot over the last few years with the pandemic, what I know for certain is that humanity is on its way, to continuing to do great and remarkable things, that there's a great sense of connection and collaboration, that kindness is really more common than sometimes we realize. And it's so important for us to remember that and to really begin to look at the world in a way that is more positive that we are more trusting, that we choose to work together and do kindnesses for one another rather than talk about all that is wrong and bad. We live in a remarkable universe and this universe is infinite and powerful and creative. And I know here at the New Thought Media Network that we are so blessed to do the work that we do. And I'm really grateful to the Good News Network that provides some of our stories, the Sunny Skies, Positive News, Good News Canada, and the LGBTQ plus news that we also get stories from on occasion. All of these provide that which you get to see here every Friday night. I hope you have a most wonderful weekend. Know that you are loved, that you are a blessing, and I'll see you again next week. And that was the good news. Bye for now. Please help us say thank you to our organizational sponsors and donors, including the Hefferlin Foundation, Affiliated New Thought Network, International New Thought Alliance, Science of Mind Archives and Library Foundation, Center for Spiritual Living Denver, Center for Spiritual Living Midtown Atlanta, New Thought Philadelphia, Planned Happiness Institute, Summit Center for Spiritual Living, Center for Spiritual Living on the Lake, Unity Spiritual Center Kitchener, Ohm Center for Spiritual Living, Center for Spiritual Living North Jersey, Unity of Savannah, Center for Spiritual Living Seattle, and all of our individual donors and sponsors. you for being a part of the New Thought Media Network. Please come be you.